Good day. This is Bear Caleb, PhD. And my PhD stands for Post Hole Digger. For I continue to work on the proper foundation of Jesua HaMashiach because the prodigal son and daughter are still out there and we have a chance to get reconnected through lives and leadership. We started this with understanding that during this pandemic, something is happening. Now, recently, as of yesterday, I understand that the comments of the son of Mr. Trump, Eric, he claims that how Trump saved Christmas, actually he says it stronger, how Trump saved Christianity. We all know how the cringe stole Christmas. At least I've seen the movie a couple of times and it's fun. It's nice to see somebody is making fun out of certain things. But the reality, there is a man in his deranged mind stating that he saved Christianity. Now, if this is true, then you know exactly what my previous videos and explanations were. Because this shows where we stand today, folks. We are at the fore eve of something major to happen. And we still have a chance to enter the kingdom of God. It's something you have to do. It's not something you say, oh, praise the Lord, and you're saved. Now, there are issues and times and situations that that is true. If you're about to die and you say, Father, I want to follow you, and you make the decision in your heart, but I am not God. All I can say is I can show you the way, the truth, and the life. Let's check it out. Why did Trump save Christianity? I'm not sure if you can see it, but it looks like some kind of a futuristic scenario. Folks, if we talked this way 2,000 years ago, somebody would have been locked up, unless you were the emperor of Rome. Now, we know that the Roman Empire had a tremendous history of war, capturing, pillaging. So the question is, is the church based on a flawed foundation? If we have 2,000 years after the Roman Empire, a man named Donald Trump make the statement that he saved Christianity. Or is there a grave Christian misconception, rape, pilferage, and the mice of mankind by Donald Trump and the destruction of the way and the second fall of humanity. Yet his son claimed that Trump saved Christianity. Do we understand what is going on in control in the whole concept of the father? Let me repeat that. Do we understand what is going on in the whole concept of Abba Father? My question is, do you accept the God of the Emperor of Rome or the one that Trump seems to have saved? Like in the days after they crucified Jesua HaMashiach, also known to you as Jesus. And when he rose again, the question was posed, will you pray to Jesus and profess allegiance to the religion of the Emperor of Rome? Folks, those were people standing by with swords, ready to throw you in the arena before the lions. This was serious business. This question was only a mere formality for the soldiers that knocked on your door, and I don't want to go too far, but the soldiers in those days, before they entered the community of the Ebonites, you see, those were the Christians, those were the followers of the way. They were the first disciples of Jesua. In other words, they were the Ebonites, an Essene community that followed the Lord. They followed the way, 
a people they said were too Christian to be Jews and too Jewish to be Christian. Ebonites were much the direct followers of Jeshua, also known by you most likely as Jesus, the great teacher and prophet who came to reveal to humanity the spiritual meaning of the law through the teachings of the way. Uh-oh. There is something that we are missing in a modern society, particularly the United States, the U.S. of A. Why am I talking so often about the United States? The United States formed a very big issue. For 70 or 80 years, they fulfilled something of a leadership that was awesome to be holden by many people as an example, and so they followed it. Now, Rome, going back 2,000 years ago, Rome, in its time, had also a very big position. For 300 years, following the crucifixion, they preserved the sacred teachings of the way of the life of Yeshua. They were taught that he was the way, the truth, and the life. And Yeshua himself remained to, with them that, to the very day. The great teacher and prophet often visited with them, teaching and healing under the promises of the scriptures. But regrettably, a significant change was on the horizon. And the time came when another biblical prediction came to pass. One to our detriment, ignored by many believers today. And what was that prediction? Uh-oh, a difficult word. Something that someone predicts. Something that is in the future. Do you see this here behind me? Something futuristic. What in the world is going on? What was that prediction? The time came under the vision of the Apostle Paul when he preached that the true church of Christ would cease to exist. Now, at that time, the name Christ was more or less a name that somebody knew what it meant, but was not used very much. So the followers, the first century believers, as I like to explain it, they would cease to exist. Now you say, how is that possible? And the church of the Antichrist would rule. Wow. The forces of darkness and the God of this world let the church and reign over the hearts and minds of the people who called themselves Christians. Folks, it's a slap in your face. When I had to face this, when I was discovering this during my trial and tribulations, I didn't want to hear this. I was against it because I had learned. I believed. But what you have been told, if you on the oath stand before a judge and you have to repeat the truth and you discover that what you believed in were lies, can you be honest to yourself on the oath to be fair and say, let me double check this because I always believed that this was the truth. And if this isn't the truth, back it up. Give me some support. Help me understand this. So let's go and do this, folks. Let's just double check. It feels nicer when you sit in a, cup, in a uh, cafe where you can have a cup of coffee. So the total disregard of the warning of the scriptures, the mainstream of Christian believers that the church is beyond Satan's reach. In other words, there's a total disregard for the warning that the scriptures for the mainstream of believers. Now, what is the mainstream of believers? We have people that are Roman Catholic. We have the Pentecostals. We have the Roman, Dutch Reformed churches. We have the old-fashioned churches. We have the churches that go back all the way to the beginning and the Orthodox churches. But all those churches are based on the changes that the emperor made in the beginning around 325, Nicaea. There was a meeting between the church or the leaders whereby the emperor proposed the following. 
either I wipe you all of the earth and kill everyone, including little babies, or you do the following. We accept the way, but we call it the Roman Catholic Church. See, Catholic at that time was just a simple, normal word. The overall, the normal, in general, accepted principles. But the Roman Catholic Church was something else. It became an appointed church by the Emperor of Rome. Now, why is this so important? The Emperor of Rome couldn't care less. He prayed to 1,500 different gods. He had all kinds of gods that they prayed to as long as his people stayed quiet because he put all those people together. So now we are going back to 2020. We're living now under the regime, quote unquote, of Donald Trump, who sees himself like an emperor who saved Christianity because he did something important. He stood everything up. But in his belief, he saved Christianity. So we have to figure out which Christianity is he talking about? Is he talking about the Church of Christ? Or is he talking about the way? The way. The first century believers followed the way, the truth, and the light. And the Christians that are following or were saved by Mr. Trump recently, or in his mind, he saved Christianity. So we have to figure out, what did he save? Did he save something that God wanted him to save? Or did he save something that Satan wanted him to save? Because of this force of divine protection, Satan has not immersed himself in every aspect of our lives. Somewhere, they believe Christianity, that God will draw a line and that Satan cannot cross that. But where does it say that? If a man like Trump believes that he saved Christianity, then we need to find out what it is that he saved. Now, 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 3 and 4. Let no one deceive you. For the day will not come until after the apostasy has come. The man who separates himself from Torah has been revealed. The one designed for doom. No, destined for doom. So there was a doomed person, destined. He will oppose himself to everything. He will oppose himself to everything that people call a god or make an object of worship. He will put himself above them all, so he will sit in the temple of God and proclaim that he is God. Now, we have a funny scenario, of course, where Mr. Trump only claims that he saves the group. He saved Christianity. What the apostle was talking about was the spirit that would be released. Now, I always have a little bit of a challenge. If it talks like a duck, it walks like a duck, it quacks like a duck, then usually it is a duck. I used to have a farm. So there are certain things that we call common sense. There are certain things on a farm that need to happen. Whether you like it or not, whether you believe it or not, they need to happen, otherwise your farm will be ruined. So when it talks and walks and quacks like a duck, it is a duck. I had hundreds of Canadian geese, and geese have a certain way of moving, flying in, landing, going on the water, going off, taking off. And the beauty of it is you recognize them. Okay, so let's go back. So what did the apostle predict it? He said there would be a time when the God of the Christian church will be a false God. Historically speaking, it has been almost universally recognized that the period while the apostle could have been referring to, we're talking about the apostle Paul, was the fourth century. 
when the church made a covenant with the Roman Empire, Constantine. It was very simple. We kill you or you say Jesus and accept Jesus. And with it comes three, uh, three gods. It's not just God the Father. It's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Why? Because they had the same. The other folks needed to feel comfortable in the new religion because they made it a uniform religion. Uniform means everyone the same. Therefore, those that had been praying to Moloch or to Baal or to whatever God or Trinity they were talking about in Egypt needed to feel comfortable. And so by making it the same image, a mother Mary, a father, and the little baby Jesus, there was now a connection with the other religion, so they felt comfortable. So Adam Clark commentary is a very well-known a commentary regarding the falling away. He writes, except there comes a falling away first. We have the original word apostasia in our word, apostasia. And by this term, we understand the dereliction of the essential principles of religious truth. Either a total abandonment of Christianity itself or such a corruption of its doctrines as renders the whole system completely inefficient to salvation. In other words, whatever you believe, you're screwed up in the beginning anyway because it is totally upside down. It defeats the purpose of you submitting yourself to that belief. But what this up Apostasy means is a question which has not yet and perhaps never will be answered to general satisfaction. This is from Adam Clark commentary, 1800. The true religion of Yeshua or Jesus ceased to exist in the outer world. Remember, there was the prodigal son. He left the father. So there must have been a memory. I remember that I used to be with the Father. But now he was in the outer world. He was away from the Father. And he worked for a living because he had lost all his money. He gambled it away. Uh, whatever fun he had, it was all gone. Remember the wedding plans? The tremendous stories about Jesua coming and praise the Lord. Things were happening. This means that the apostle predicts that soon the true religion of Jesus would end to live in this world. Now, the name Jesus is technically Yeshua HaMashiach, but most of you know him by Jesus. So in this respect, the words of the apostle are exactly in their assertion. From the period of the first century of our common area, when it was written, by the hands of Paul, it prophetically speaks of a time soon when the teachings that Yeshua placed in the hands of humanity would cease to exist. And it is the correct assertion of many Christians this took place in the establishment of an institu institutionalized church under the control of pagan Rome in the fourth century. So we have lived from 400 up to 2020. And now we have the new savior, President Donald Trump. In the morning, Christian fails to realize that the total corruption of the church doctrine, which the apostle speaks of, was brought about the adoption of the Christ of Constantine. See, the Christ of Constantine is a whole different scenario. It was brought by Mr. Emperor of Rome, Constantine. And his Christ was a rejection of Messiah, Jesua of Nazareth. Believers used the name Jesus to call themselves his followers. What Christians have lost sight of is that the essence of the religion of the New Testament or New Covenant is spiritual. So we have first the old flesh. 
we were walking in the dark. We were in a dark situation. But now, with the coming of Yeshua and the introduction of the way and the light, there is now a light, folks. And when I hold up my light, I'm looking at something here. I've got a small light here. And maybe you see it. This is a small light. That little light is enough for me at night to really work proper. So the light works. It doesn't matter that it is only this small. It's just about the size of my hand. The beauty is when I point it, there is a light coming. You see, a light shining is the beauty of we are the light. We are on the way, the truth and the light. And what is the light? The light is from the kingdom that shines from within. See, inside, we are the vessel of the kingdom of God. And when we were in the outer darkness, like the prodigal son or prodigal daughter, or we got lost, as the saying is, we had no light. We were in outer darkness. But when we accepted to follow the way, the truth, and the light, see, following something and just saying something, praise the Lord, because I don't want to be killed. And I say, Jesus, I follow you. And then the continuation of Christianity is now just pray the little prayer and you will be saved. It starts with your mouth, what you confess. But then it has to be followed up by action. And the action is that you're now seeking the kingdom of God. And God will give you directions because Yeshua is the light. He is the path, the way, and the truth. So if he is the way, then he will lead you into connection with the Father, one God Almighty. He is the one that will teach you through his Holy Spirit. And therefore, here again, the spiritual body of Messiah was crucified in the fourth century. A crucifixion means you got killed, you were dead, you were gone, kaput. The fatal period when Emperor Christ Constantine called himself a Christian. From this time onward, the Christians had no more of the spirit of Christ than the heathens. This is John Wesley. Wesley's work, volume 7, sermon 89, page 2627. In further explanation regarding this crucial prediction of the apostle, the Adam Clark commentary provides us a vivid description of Constantine and the formation of his new church. He said, everyone that opposes, he stands against and exalts himself above all divine authority. And every object of adoration and every institution relative to divine worship, himself being the source whence must originate all the doctrines of religion and all its rites and ceremonies, so that sitting in the temple of God, having the highest place and authority in the Christian church, he acts as God, taking upon himself God's title and attributes and arrogating to himself the authority that belongs to the Most High. Again, Adam Clark commentary. These events came to pass is well documented from an historical perspective. But what does that mean to the church today? The church was ruled by satanic forces that dictated every aspect of Christian doctrine. And although many fa faithful believers Clergy, pastors, religious authorities today have recognized the defilement of the church that took place in the beginning of the fourth century. What could not be revealed until now was the absolute certainty that the church has never recovered from the darkness and corruption imposed upon by the teachings of the church, by the ruthless political despots of the past essential foundational principles and indispensable elements of the new covenant knowledge of what is constantly referred to in the Bible as the mysteries of God is absent from the 
thinking of the body of the faithful believers to this very day. Folks, it's very heavy. Ephesians 6, verse 12, the complete Jewish Bible. For we are not struggling against humans, but against the rulers, authorities, and cosmic powers governing this darkness against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Yes, to their loss, the leaders of the modern church ignored the warnings of the apostle. Let no man mesmerize you in any wise, for it will not be except the falling away from first comes first, and the man of sin will be revealed, the son of perdition, he that opposes and exalted himself against all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he sitteth in the temple of God, setting himself forth as God. Folks, it hurts so much to share this with you. Because it took me a long time to even accept the fact that what I had been taught for so many years, for decades, and believed were subject to failure. My first discovery was actually way, way, way back when I was six years old and my mom passed away and she was not allowed to be buried in holy ground. We were all of a sudden no Roman Catholics because my mom was married to a man that could not say that he was a Christian, nor did, was he a Roman Catholic. Therefore, she could not be buried in holy ground. I started to hate God, you know, because they said God knows what he's doing. But God had nothing to do with stupidity. This was a decision from an institute that takes little boys. And we know the whole story behind it. That same institute that is fallible, and that's where it started. When I was in court and we defended our position, I discovered corruption, bribery. I discovered evil. When it turns out that my best friend that I entrusted we were friends for over 10 years and spent a lot of time together developing businesses, doing certain things. Turned out a Freemason, not just a Freemason, he was the head of the local Freemasons. And when I turned him down in a business transaction, that was worth indeed a couple of billion dollars, he was furious. And he told me he would show me how strong he was, how much power he had. Now, why in the world do you have to destroy somebody when you are already a multimillionaire living in a 15,000 square foot home in London, Ontario? And the folks from the Ontario area know what I'm talking about. If you need to destroy somebody else because you don't get what you want, you are motivated by evil, my friend. And if the same is happening with the church again, why are the leaders not waking up? You call yourself the body of Christ, like I believed I belong to. Till through the courts, through the studies, I came to the understanding that PMS, which I wrote my book about politics, money, and spirituality, they are the three lying spirits to confuse the body of Christ to confuse the followers of the way. If we are living in an outer darkness, we need a light. So we need the light of God. It is a spiritual development, folks. Spirituality means we cannot always see it with our eyes. We need to hear it with our spiritual ears and see it with our spiritual eyes. So we have to go inside. God lives within you. And I know it's hard to understand if you have not been brought up with it. But reality is what is happening today with this pandemic and a man that is getting to a point where you wonder what in the world is he leading? Where is he going to? Why are they repeating over and over and over 
how good this man is. Well, he is deranged in my understanding. Reality is, folks, we are living in a time and a period where we need to realize that the wedding invitation that the Lord Yeshua had given, come and meet the Father, come and be part of this party. It's party time with God. He said he will be restored. The prodigal son, the prodigal daughter, we can be restored with the Father. But that restoration happens when we go inside, folks. Not what we say, but it's what we do. And the Father says, I will recognize my children with the love that they treat each other. Now, in all honesty, I'm not judging you, but I'm only asking you. What have you seen lately in your church? I've been three times excommunicated by people that swore, if I do not do what you do, you won't get into heaven. Well, sorry, folks. The first time I was really confused and I thought, oh, my gosh, I won't go to heaven. The second time I got a little better at it because I realized that no way you have a right to hold me out of heaven. And the third one, that hurts the most because those are people I believed in, supported. But the Lord gave me wisdom. And excommunication is not part of what God does. God said, well done, you good and faithful servant. He wants you in his house. He wants you with him. You are a child of God, but you have to accept the way, the truth, and the light. And that leads to your kingdom. And God's kingdom is within us, folks. That is the spiritual aspect. We have to learn to let go of certain beliefs, which is very hard because you have been indoctrinated. And why was that so important? When Jesua spoke to the leadership of the believers at that time, those were the Jews, he said, you guys are the offspring of the devil. Those were people that were teaching in the carnal way. They were given the word of God. They were holding on to the word of God, not entering into the kingdom because the word. So if we have to accept the fact that we were wrong, we can say, sorry, Father, I did not know. Would you forgive me? God will give us insight. But I need to share with you one more thing. Tough times never last, but tough times people do. God bless you and keep in touch. Bye for now.